We're back, and I'm always pleased to say welcome to Securing America regular Carol Swain. Dr. Swain is a former professor at Princeton and Vanderbilt Universities. She's the host of the Be the People podcast, heard on America Out Loud Talk Radio Network. She's also the author of a book of the same name, Be the People, A Call to Reclaim America's Faith and Promise. Carol, it's so good to have you with us. Welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I want you to react, if you would, to something that uh, President Biden said in his address to some of the Congress the other night um, on this whole issue of systemic racism. Let's roll the tape. My fellow Americans, we have to come together to rebuild trust between law enforcement and the people they serve, to root out systemic racism in our criminal justice system, and to enact police reform in George Floyd's name that passed the House already. So, Carol, I know that you do not believe there is systemic racism in this country, but what does it mean to have the President of the United States propounding this falsehood? I mean, what does it mean when the President of the United States uh, injects himself into a trial when the jury, you know, is having deliberations and pretty right much too. sends out the signal that they have to convict. And this systemic racism and the language that the president used in his speech, and I think the last part of the speech was horrible, uh, it's all critical race theory. It's about dividing Americans. And I can tell you that I was triggered by his statements about race and the hypocrisy and when he talks about passing the George Floyd uh, Act, uh, that's legislation that if it does pass, it would make it impossible for police officers to do their jobs. And so it would hurt uh, black Americans more than any other group because they need police officers in their communities. And so it's not good for blacks, it's not good for America, it's not good for policing. If they cared about uh, criminal justice reform, they would have supported Tim Scott's legislation. We'll talk about that in a moment if we can. But just staying with this point that you've made, here's the president saying we need to come together. And yet he is enunciating one of the most divisive, and indeed one of the calculatedly divisive statements of our time. And that's because it's being used by, among others, Marxists, uh, the Chinese communists, uh, others on the hard left, to take down this country, is it not? This idea of a s right, systemic right. racist country? He also talked about white uh, supremacy, and he used all the talking points. And it was so clear to me, you know, that that speech had maybe three or four different speech writers, but that part of the speech, you know, it was written by the radical left, and it was so div divisive. And we used to call President Obama, at least some of us, divided in chief. I mean, Joe Biden uh, is taking it to a whole new level. And they are destroying America. They are creating animosity where none existed before. And as far as systemic racism, I was born into that system. I watched it collapse. I watched us make racial progress that ended after Barack Obama got elected uh, with his vice president, Joe Biden. And there's no bigger white supremacist than Joe Biden. He has a long record of white supremacy, and so does the Democratic Party. Whatever they say uh, that someone else is doing, uh, you can be sure that that is describing them and their evil actions. So, so true. Um, talk a little bit about uh, Senator Scott and his legislation and why you think that's a far better way to go to try to both address issues of police conduct, but also to actually unify the country behind it. Well, the legislation that they're pushing, the George Floyd Act, would release the immunity that police officers get in the course of their jobs, and it would leave them uh, open to lawsuits that they could lose their homes, their uh, their savings, their retirement. Uh, who would police under those circumstances? What uh, Tim Scott was trying to do was to reform policing, make sure that uh, communities and police had the resources that they needed and also, you know, to increase the accountability. But as far as I recall, it didn't strip them of the uh, qualified immunity that police officers get 
that's essential to their being able to do their jobs. Yeah. And in so many other ways, I think it really is vital that we be supporting them in the most dangerous line of work in the country, arguably, uh, and not making their mission impossible, which is what uh, the left seems to have in mind. Uh, Carol, you're a distinguished educator. Let me ask you very quickly about something else that the president uh, talked about, namely the idea that he's going to extend the free education in this country to pre-K and two years of uh, community college. Uh, what is your counsel on that score? Well, first of all, it sounded to me that he was going, yeah, certainly pre-K. He wanted to add, you know, two more years of uh, of uh, education to the system for, for kids that are poor. And we have a failed system as it is. They're not teaching children basic skills. They can graduate from high school and not know how to read. And so I don't see adding two more years to that as being the focus. We need to be returning to basic skills. And as far as community colleges, I got my first degree from one. I worked as a work-study student and, and eventually was hired by the community college for a while. And, uh, you know, there's no free lunch. You have to have skin in the game. And the problem with free, free, free is that people, uh, anything that's free is not valued in the same way it would be if you actually put forth uh, some of your own contribution. So I think that um, the community colleges, that's not the place for people that can barely get through high school. And I think community colleges offer second chances. You have to want those second chances. And uh, they need to focus on strengthening K through 12 education and not just indoctrination. You know, this is such an important point, and I want you to come back, if you would, Carol, soon and, okay, and visit with us at greater length about what's really required to try to get the educational system back on its feet. Uh, as it happens, we're going to talk next with Dr. Peter Wood, who is warning about a whole new uh, indoctrination program that is exceedingly worrying, that is now uh, the cusp of being foisted upon our kids our educators in the public school systems, namely the Action Civics Project. Um, there's legislation about this. You're going to learn much more about it, and it simply reinforces uh, the very telling point that you've just made, Carol Swain. We thank you for joining us. Come back to us again soon. Peter Wood is next.